that announcement earlier, there will be some time where we're praying around tables, so you'll want to make sure you're with some other people to pray. That's later in the service. All righty. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I hope you all have a moment or two to digest and to get ready. I'm going to ask you all to stand. This is going to take maybe a little bit of doing. Stand and face this way. Get your chair into whatever position you need to. Be courteous of these people around you. It's going to be a little tight quarters. We're going to get ready to sing here in a moment. But I wanted to read something very short for you. I'm sure you've heard. Psalm 98 starts this way. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. I wanted to read this whole psalm, but I think I'm not going to. We're going to stop right there and ponder for a moment. It says, sing to the Lord a new song. That might be a literally brand new song that you take the effort of writing He's worthy of new songs being written to him. That might be a song that you sing for the very first time. That might be just you starting to sing again, starting to sing anew. He's worthy of that. He's worthy of that attention. He's worthy of that devotion, of that effort. Why? What is the answer that the psalmist gives? Why is he worthy of this kind of focus and attention? Because he has done marvelous things. Past tense, completed actions. He has done marvelous things. We look all through the Old Testament, all the miracles, all the faithfulness of God on display, all the promises of God to his people kept 100%. And we look at the ultimate promise that was kept in the sending of his son, the accomplishment of the sacrifice for our sins, defeating death forever, making us have a home with him. He has done marvelous things, period. No, no, exclamation point. He has done marvelous things, and so he is worthy of a new song this morning. I wanted that to be fresh on our minds as we start a brand new calendar year. As we look back on 2022, we can sing to the Lord a new song, for in 2022, he has done marvelous things. He's not quit doing that. <laughs> he does them. He constantly does through his people. I want to cast our minds toward that as we start to sing. What has Jesus done? 
What has he taught you in this last year? In what particular ways have you seen his mercy and his grace lived out in your life? Think on those things specifically. We're going to have a time later where that microphone right over there will be open. And we would love to hear you come forward and just share something quick, that something you saw this past year where you saw God's mercy and grace, where you, you could tell that God was teaching you something. Share that with all of us. We want to sing together to the Lord a new song because he has done marvelous things. Let's have that in mind as we begin to sing.
life to exalt thee, Jesus, you alone. Jesus, you What is our hope? What is our hope in life and death? Christ alone, Christ alone. What is our only confidence? That our souls to Him belong. Who holds our days within His hand? What comes apart from his command? And what will keep us to the end? The love of Christ in which we stand. Oh, sing hallelujah, our hope springs eternal. Truth can calm the troubled soul. God is good, God is good, and where His grace and goodness known in our great Redeemer's blood, who holds our faith when fears arise, who stands above the stormy. Who sends the wave that bring us nigh unto the shore, the rock of Christ? Oh, sing hallelujah, our hope springs eternal. Oh, sing hallelujah, now. To the grave, what will we see? Come on. Christ, he lives. Christ, he lives. And what reward will heaven bring? Everlasting life with him. There we will rise to meet the Lord. Then sin and death will be. I 
I am holding on to faith Cause I know you'll make a way Pray this I don't always understand I don't always get to see But I will believe it Yes, I will believe it Cause you make mountains move You make giants fall You use songs of praise To shake prison walls So I will speak to my fear And I will preach to my doubt That you were faithful then And you'll be faithful now I am standing on your word Calling heaven down to earth You will fight my enemies And this will end in victory And I will believe it Yes, I will believe it Cause you made my Because we can know that no matter what we're going through, no matter what fears we're facing, no matter what enemies may be staring us down, you are faithful and you have always been and you will always be. Because you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we praise you for that, Lord. And we want to put our hope in you and our trust in you right now. And so we pray that you would increase our faith. We we pray that you would not let us settle for, for what amount of faith that we've had in the past for, for simply having enough to get us there, to get us to heaven, to get us by the next day. But Lord, would you give us a, a faith that, that moves forward into what you have called us to, both as individuals and as a church. And I pray that you would use this time of testimony, of praise, of the word, of all of it, Lord, that you would use it to increase the faith of your people. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. You can have a seat. And as you do, maybe one of you doesn't want to sit down because you want to share what God's been doing in your life in the past year. Uh, So here are the two questions, one of two questions, and these are pretty broad, so I'm pretty sure that you can...
fit something in here, okay? And I'm going to hear from like four, five, maybe, depending on you know how long, uh, people. Either, what has the Lord been teaching you over this past year? Okay, so maybe... Maybe there's something specifically from his word that he's been teaching you or through a, a circumstance that you've been uh, learning something about himself. Or how has the Lord particularly met you with his grace and mercy this year? Okay, How have you, have you personally experienced the gracious hand of the Lord in your life? And, and let me remind you, as you're considering, do I share a testimony or not? Uh, testimonies are for the sake of the glory of the Lord, right? Yeah. We talk about sending witnesses, right? And what is a witness? It is a person who testifies to the work of God in their lives. And so we send witnesses to the world for sure, but we send witnesses to the church as well, right? We, we need to testify to one another about the goodness of God in our lives because that builds up our faith, that encourages our faith, okay? And so if you're ready to do that, I would invite you right now. Does anybody have a testimony that they would like to share? And you're, we're going to have this mic here ready for you. I know that it's hard to be the first one. But I'm really good at waiting. <laughs> Mary Ann Mahan, thank you. even be up here let alone first okay anyway so all my sisters from gc encouraged me to come up here this year i really wanted to last year but i didn't and then i realized that um it, uh the god's work wasn't done yet so this is the completion of what was happening uh a year ago and that would have been more depressing if if i shared last year because <laughs> we had at the end of the year a lot of um my father was dying and died, and so his mother, same thing, all at the same time, and it was a lot of stress. My dad was in North Carolina. But anyways, uh, and this is mostly um, on my dad. So my brother lives in North Carolina with his wife. I'll try to speak. But anyway, <laughs> and, um, and he's known. I've been a, ever since I was a Christian. He knew it. We never talked about it much, just, you know, maybe a little bit here and there all these years because I'm old now and uh, <laughs> and so uh, uh, so my dad was going on to hospice and of course we're like oh does he have a priest or a preacher or whatever and uh, my brother and his wife they never talked about God even in their marriage or anything and my sister-in-law was really the one she said well it's not my place to speak for him and um, so that was part of God work like getting in there and making them think about him and uh, another part God was doing this too they've eaten at Waffle House for breakfast for decades it's just what they do <laughs> it's their place for breakfast <laughs> and thank goodness for that because uh, their local Waffle House also was under construction so they couldn't go there and they were put out they always had to go 20 minutes further down the road to the next Waffle House and uh, during the course of the, my dad and the hospice preacher thing, this waitress just said, hey, where do you all go to church? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and that prompted my sister-in-law to say to my brother, hey, would you mind looking for churches with me? Would you be open to going to church? And he said, sure. So, and, and that one lady, I mean, all of us could say one little thing like that to someone and never know what happened to that person. But what happened with my brother and his wife, they started looking at churches and they found this uh, church, uh, the Blue Ridge Cowboy Church. <laughs> <laughs> and so they go there and um, the rest is history. They, um, they were just loved by those people. And um, so I drove down this, this year <laughs> on Easter uh, to see them baptized into Christ. And <laughs> like, my, yeah. <laughs> That was an encouragement to me, and I just want to tell everybody, if you have people like that in your life, to never give up, and all, and you could be the difference for someone else's family by just asking that one little thing and never seeing that person again. Amen, <laughs> so, amen, amen. Yeah. Love that. Thank you so much, Ray. 
Colby. Nice. Thank you for not, not even making me say who's next. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, it's going to be rare that I come up here. <laughs> but <laughs> about a month ago, uh, I was still working at PowerPro, and I was looking for a job, and it's around here. So uh, probably about first week of December, uh, d uh, what's his name? Dustin, Dustin Martin, the WD, DWD Landscaping. He calls my dad and says, hey, I heard your son is still interested in a, a job. So I give him a call back and we go ahead. I was like, sign me up, <coughs> I'll join you. And I didn't realize his, his work is literally right behind my house, seven minutes, so couldn't be any better. And I used to drive 40 minutes to go to Power Pro, and it's such a blessing. We see God working particularly uh, by providing, and even through his church, right? Because Dustin and Kelsey come here on occasion, and, and, uh, and so that, that's just awesome the way that the connections work there. Who else? wants to give testimony to God's mercy and grace or something that God has taught them. Lola, thank you. You know, when you sit there and you say, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, <laughs> he's not going to be comfortable until you do, so <laughs> I want to enjoy the rest of this morning. Um, <laughs> what God gave me this year be still and know that I am God. That's who? Bodies? <laughs> Get a little closer. Get a little closer. Yeah. You know you what you're going to have to do the for the next one. Okay. okay. Um, and know that I am God. And there's three ways that I've taken that this year. And one is, excuse me if this offends anybody, but Lola, shut up. <laughs> and I got this and you either believe it or you don't just be quiet for a minute <laughs> then he says be still if you read the rest of the verse it says I will be known I will be God I will have authority eventually he wins so be still then the third way is he holds me and just goes shh Be still. I got it. So this year has been a year of change. Um, and that verse, I was looking for a gift for my grandchildren. We have 12 of them. And there is these great bracelets you kids wear that are like you can make them tighter in your leather or something. <laughs> anyway, there it was Morris code spread out on the beads, and it spelled out, be still and know. So God gave me the opportunity to give that to our grandchildren and to share with them that. Then, my favorite show is NCIS. <laughs> okay. I was watching NCIS, and in the background was the song, it's called Be Still and Know. And so I looked it up on YouTube, via request that I had to do that. <laughs> and it was by The Fray, and I, mean, I don't know if that's a good group, or not, but I listened to it, and it was so profound. And so I played that for our grandchildren on Christmas. That's what we got. And God just used all of that to testify to myself and to our grandchildren. And how he also said, be still, is how we find you guys. And what a blessing you have been for us, to us. And no small coincidence, now the church is going to be right across the street. <laughs> Be still, Lola, I got this. <laughs> Anyone next? Sarah? Sarah's coming on over. I probably could have left her. Oh, have to say hi. I'm tall like Lola, I can do this. Uh, um, so this year, um, I grew up 
we have a family who was missionaries and was constantly serving God, constantly serving, 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 serving. So when we left that ministry, my husband and I, um, just the thought of serving God, I think, was always something that was very important to me, as it should be. Um, but this year, I feel like God has done a lot of change in me to very much, like Lola just said, to be still. Um, and that has meant taking a step back and eliminating things from my life so I can hear him. Um, and that has been really hard for me to do. Um, and that has come all the way down to selling my business that I've had for years um, and really focusing in on my calling. And my calling, first and foremost, is to serve him as a wife and as a mom and then let the rest outflow. And even from taking a break from the worship team, which has been 10 years, I don't think I have taken a break from the worship team. And, and you're back. I'll be back, <laughs> yeah, after next week, I think. Um, but just for the fall, I mean, just taking a step back and really, really starting to think, why am I serving? Why am I singing? <laughs> why am I doing the things that I do? Not just I serve God, but why am I doing those things? And being able to have some really good talks with Ben and, and David and just really, um, I've been part of a um, Monica and Nikki and I have been having women's Bible studies and really diving deep into those scriptures that we don't normally want to dive into. <laughs> um, and just really evaluating why do I believe what I believe? And why do I serve? And why am I doing these things? And what, what does God want me to eliminate so I can hear clearly? And I feel like this year has been a huge year of growth, and it's also been really hard. Um, because when we grow, it's not always pleasant. Um, but I'm excited for 2023 to be able to move forward and maybe serve with some clearer, clearer eyes. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks. Maybe one more person? All right, Daniel's like, if it's one more, that's it. <laughs> yeah. God gave me many gifts, but height was not one of them. Like Lola said, God's not going to let you sit until you get up and say what he wants you to say. And as you all know, I am not one for personal conversation with large groups of people. But anyway, so how God's been working on me this year has been one of the questions this year is like, okay, I've been newly baptized when I was 13, 14 or whatever, and, you know, been trying to grow as a Christian. It's like, how do I know I'm growing? Because they tell you, like, your actions reflect your heart. And it's like, okay, but... I'm more of a head knowledge kind of person. How am I know that my actions aren't just what I think I should be doing, not what God's telling me to be doing? Like, where, where, do, I, where do I know the difference or if like God's actually working through me and through the things that I say or if I'm just doing things and floating through life and whatnot? And so that's just kind of been like a big question for me this year. And I, God has been answering that question without me realizing it until I like stop and think about it or like at the worst possible times in my mind. So it's like I, I'm around a lot of people. You guys know I'm really ext extroverted. So there's a lot of people that I'm around all the time. And so, like, how do I invest in people without, you know, sacrificing the group for one person, which, you know, God calls you to call to work with whoever you're with. But there'll be times where, like, people I didn't think I had, like, an impact with, I'd just be, like, we'll be in a truck together and, and just hanging out. And next thing I know, they're sitting in Mai's parking lot and they're spilling their heart and their whatever to me and they're, and then like just discussing God and what he's done in their life and like the change in how they understood him and hearing them confess sins to me or the way they're growing has worked on my heart has been like, okay, well, if God didn't want me to be invested or didn't think that what I was doing was worth something, then he wouldn't put this person in front of me just now to, to minister to or even to encourage me because talking to people that I haven't seen in a long time. Suddenly, it's just like seeing how much they'd grown because God has been working on them was encouraging to me and know that God's like, look, get, look at your own life because where you were this time last year, you were not in this position to be hearing this from this person or to be, you know, sharing these things with these people or anything like that. And so it's been subtle, I guess, but 
it's encouraging for me to know that God is using me for things, even if I doesn't feel like it, or if I feel like what I'm doing doesn't have an impact, because I, I've begun to realize that the things I say and the things I do, I might not be aware of how they affect other people, but then down the road, people come and be like, oh, you said all these things, or we've had these conversations, and I, I mean, I wasn't even aware that I said things like that, or, and it's not me, it's God working through me, because I feel I wasn't even aware of it. But that's just been a huge encouragement over the past year, and just something I've continued to work with is, you know, trusting that God's going to use me and not just that I'm trying to do it all by myself. Why don't we praise the Lord together uh, by praying? Uh, Heavenly Father, we are uh, so incredibly grateful for the work that you've done in, in these stories and more. Uh, we know that each one of us could could share, uh, if we thought hard enough about it, of, of, of what, what you've been trying to get our attention in, uh, what you've been doing in our lives, and because you are a living and active God. And Lord, I, I praise you that, that you use, like, like uh, Marianne and Daniel said, you use the, the words uh, of, of, of finite people in your great and glorious plan to show that, that we can't do it, but you do. We don't even always know what we're saying, but you do. I, I praise you that you use your word in our lives, that, that you impress upon us your word. I, I, pray, I praise you because you care uh, about the big things and the small things, that, that you, you care about every single detail of our lives, and we need not worry. We, we need not be anxious for anything. And so, uh, again, Lord, I pray that you would fuel our faith with this knowledge. That, that what you have done in the past, you will do again. And, and that you will work to glorify and honor your name. And so we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. We continue to have a bit of uh, technical difficulties with the screens, but David's going to prompt us well enough uh, for each line. So. <laughs> this song's a wordier one, so if if you find yourself having difficulty latching on, let let this be a song that's sung over you. That as you hear the words, you sing them in your heart in faith. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's stand together. Who sing all the honor? light and promise faithfulness and mercy is new your gentle voice brings peace and solace calm assurance hope renewed the width and breadth of each horizon depths below and heights above are small in compass scale and measure when compared to your great love you loved us though we chose rebel Chasing idols found within. We were bound in shame and hidden till you called our names again. When justice came to claim its wages, mercy stood in our defense. Grace now down into creation. Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. All the honor, all the glory lifted up and seated high. The 
cross you bore for our redemption, stained with blood and reckoning, was for us our restoration, heaven's crown and hell's defeat. And as you rose in strength and Savior, friend, our delight and greatest treasure, ever faithful to the end. So as we gather, we remember every promise, every Lord, I pray that, that we would attend our hearts to you, that we, would, that we would be attentive to your word right now, that you would shape us by it, mold our lives according to it, that we might be transformed into the likeness of your son. We pray this in the name of Jesus, amen. You can have a seat, and we are going to open up God's Word for just a little bit here. Uh, you can open your Bibles to John chapter 20 if you have one. There are some Bibles in the, in the chairs if you can find one. If you don't have one, but we want you to have a copy of God's Word in front of you. And we're going to be in John chapter 20, beginning in verse 21 today. Uh, as you're turning there, uh, let me just give you a, a recap of where we've been in terms of our studies this year. Uh, a lot of times we have a lot of different sermon series throughout the year, and this year we've really only had two sermon series, right? Uh, one was in the Gospel of Mark, and we just kept going. We just went, we went spring, summer, fall, and then finished, right? And, and, and remember that the, the theme, the purpose of that was to conv be convinced that now is the time to tell others the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now is the time to tell others the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And I hope that that phrase was indelibly marked upon your brain because I repeated it every week for about 45 weeks. And, uh, and, and we wanted to get that into our brains, but also into our hearts. Uh, and then, coming out of that Mark series, we started into Advent. And we, we talked about the reason for the season. And that's what we've been doing the past, uh, the past few uh, weeks, the past, since basically Thanksgiving. And uh, I did not have a short little sentence for that one, uh, but let me try to recap the entire series in one sentence. Here we go. In one sentence, Jesus came from heaven to earth 
to provide the standard of God's judgment, thus fulfilling God's plan to call sinners and pay the ransom cost they owed for their sin, giving them light so that they could see the glory of God and so that God the Father would receive much glory through him. There, it's a long sentence, but it's one sentence. And pretty much, it's the gospel, right? Aren't you glad I didn't repeat that sentence like every single week and make you repeat it back to me, right? But, but, it, but it, Jesus came to be and to work out the gospel, the good news. That's why we celebrate Christmas. That's why we celebrate the incarnation. And so in this first sermon of 2023, uh, I want to tie all of that together as we look forward and head into a new year and think about where are we going next. In John chapter 20, Jesus has risen from the dead. He is no longer talking about why he came into the world. Now he's talking about leaving the world and, and, and now how he is going to be sending his disciples into the world. And so if you look down in your Bibles at verse 21, it says this. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. John 20, 21. Uh, I'm sorry, I started in verse 20. That's why you're looking at me confused. Okay. I'm going to start again. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Here's our big idea for today. Jesus came into the world to send us out into the world as his witnesses. Jesus came into the world to send us out into the world as his witnesses. Jesus sends us out to reflect his purpose and calling in our own purpose and calling. Our mission as a church comes directly out of Jesus' mission to the world. And so from these verses, I want us to briefly look at five principles for our mission that flow from Christ's incarnation. Five principles for our mission that flow from Christ's incarnation. And the first is this, our mission must flow from our own peace with God. Our mission must flow from our own peace with God. And I love what Lola said, and I love what Sarah said uh, uh, about needing to be able to rest in what God is calling us to do, and not more and not less. Our mission must flow from our experience of peace with God. Jesus, before he commissions his disciples, says this, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And I don't think that that was just because they were seeing a guy who they had previously thought was dead, and now they're visibly seeing him for the first time. That's part of it, right? But it's not simply a statement to calm their fears in the moment. Rather, this is a, a statement of blessing to lay hold of all that is true because of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It, peace can be with them because of what Jesus has just accomplished. Remember what we talked about. What did the angels say to the shepherds at, at his initial coming? Glory to God in the highest and on earth. What? Peace among those with whom he is pleased. Mission necessitates that we first experience peace. The Greek is Irene, the Hebrew is shalom. It's wholeness, a whole right relationship with God, with ourselves, with others, with the rest of creation. We can't invite others into a party that we have not experienced ourselves, that, that we don't have a place at. Our experience of peace with God leads us to go in peace to others and to call them to peace with God. That's what this world needs, isn't it? That's what we all need. 
in this next year is to experience that relationship of peace with God and then out of that to experience that relationship of healing and restoration and redemption that exists within his people. And our mission is not one of of using people in order to earn our standing with God. That that would be a mission that, that is trying to gain peace with God, right? And that's not, the, that's not why Jesus calls us, and, and that's not why he sends us out. We're not earning our peace with God, right? Instead, our mission of calling people to, a peace, to peace with God comes from the peace that we have already experienced by his grace. Secondly, our, our mission must respond to Christ's commission to send us. Our mission must respond to Christ's commission to send us. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. There is a, a commission in that. There's a sending out. It's inherent. Jesus was sent from heaven to earth, and then Jesus will send his disciples out from, in, in their case, Jerusalem to Judea and Samaria to the very ends of the earth. There has to be a sending. There has to be a going, a leaving, a crossing of my own boundaries that I've placed in my life and where Jesus wants to send me, where he's calling me to. My mission must respond to Christ's commission to send me. And so let's just think about the, the mission that we have here at Oak Hill, and how do we describe that, right? We describe that by, first of all, proclaiming Jesus. Let's say it together. Pro- proclaim Jesus, equip servants, send witnesses to the glory of God. One more time. Proclaim Jesus, equip servants, send witnesses to the glory of God. And so it starts with proclaiming Jesus, right? A- and that might be you out in your sphere of influence proclaiming Jesus, but but. As a church, how do we purpose ourselves to do that? Here on Sunday mornings. We get Jesus to the top of the flagpole, right? We say, Christ, our hope in life and death. We say, what is my only hope? Christ. And he lives. And I am in him. Proclaim Jesus. And then we equip servants. Where have we primarily purposed ourselves to do that at Oak Hill? Within our gospel communities, right? Because we don't think of equipping merely as tasks to do, like I'm going to teach you how to do something. Equipping is learning how to grow and endure and abide in Christ as we go about his calling on our lives. That's equipping, and that happens in gospel communities. How are we called to live out the gospel together as a church? And then, out of that, we send witnesses. We send witnesses who, who point others to Jesus. And like I said earlier in the testimony time, uh, we, we send witnesses internally into the families of our church, right? And then externally into our local community and the entire world. And so Jesus has a calling on your life. And we talk about this in, in relationship to our mission statement that that, that the pathway of a disciple follows that, right? You, you receive the proclamation of Jesus. You become a believer. And, and then you get equipped. You get equipped in the foundational principles of the faith. You, you, you learn how to have a relationship with this God. You, you learn what his calling is on your life. But if you only ever stay there and you're never sent out, you're not growing as a disciple. That's exactly what Daniel said, right? He, he's like, He's like, how am I growing? And the answer was, the Lord is using me in my sphere of influence. The Lord is using me. That, that's how we grow. There comes a point where there, you, can, you, you won't continue growing in Bible studies and all of these things that are just fill me up, fill me up, fill me up, unless you start reproducing that in other people. And so our mission must respond. Christ's commission to send us. Third, our mission must take the posture of humble service. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Get that. The Father sent the Son. 
And we were talking about that all throughout the Christmas season, that, that this is a ascending, a, a, a submission of the Son to the Father in role, not in value or, or deity, right? That, that, that he willingly submitted himself to the Father to enter earth. The Son had to have this mindset that Paul describes in Philippians 2, 6 through 11. It's up on the screen for you. Uh, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. That word means to be gripped onto with a death grip. Uh, he didn't have that equality with God in an iron-fisted claw. But he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself. By becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's the mindset of God the Son that led to the incarnation. The the, the, the mindset that led to what we just celebrated at Christmas. And it is the same mindset to which we are called as well. Paul set that whole verse up by saying, Have this mind among you, which is yours in Christ Jesus. You need to have that same mindset, the posture of humble service. We are called to serve one another. And we are called to sacrificially the gospel to the world. Know this, that that mission will always require laying down our lives for the sake of someone else because that is the way of Jesus. Mission will always require laying down our lives, our rights, our preferences, our comfort for the sake of someone else because that is the way of Jesus. You will never participate in the mission of of Jesus Christ, if your priority is looking out for number one. You will never do it. Mission is always costly to any of our self-focused longings. And whether that is upending your schedule to, to go visit someone at the Aroma Care Connect ministry, or that's pushing past your insecurities in order to facilitate a, a Hope Explored or a Christianity Explored, gathering at Solanco Neighborhood Ministries, or whether that's doing work that you would normally get paid to do, but you're going to do it as a volunteer through Good Neighbors Home Repair Ministry. Or maybe it's simply being clear with a friend or a family member about your concern for their soul because they need a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's always going to involve you pushing past the pain line. Always. Always. Because mission takes the form of humble service. That's the posture of Jesus on mission. As I have sent, as the Father has sent me, how did he do that? Through humble service. So I am sending you. Fourth, our mission requires we rely on the power of the Holy Spirit together. So the, this is where it kind of gets weird, right? Jesus oh, breathes on them. Some of you might be grossed out by that. (laughs) Jesus breathes on them, and he says, receive the Holy Spirit. What is happening here? Jesus is reminding them that their very life as disciples comes from the power of the Holy Spirit. He is to them as the very air that they breathe. In chapter 16, he told them that that there would be a time when he would no longer be with them, but that it was actually to their advantage that he could go away, because if he did not go away, the Helper, the Holy Spirit, would not come to them. But if he did go away, he would send them the Holy Spirit. And so now he's again talking about this and and, and demonstrating this in in a visible illustration, and then the Holy Spirit is going to come upon them at Pentecost, just a few weeks later. But I want you to note this as well. This is easy to miss. 
he breathes on them together. He breathes on them together. We can assume that that there are more than just the 12 in this room. The women were likely there. Definitely the two disciples whom he met on the road to Emmaus, Cleopas and another unnamed disciple were there. And so this is a a mixed group, kind of similar to the 120 who were gathered on Pentecost, who received the Holy Spirit. But notice what Jesus doesn't do here. He doesn't walk up to each individual person and breathe on them and say, receive the Holy Spirit. And he doesn't just walk up to the leaders, to the apostles, and say, receive the Holy Spirit. No, he illustrates the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon the whole church by breathing on all of them together. The the church of Jesus Christ is empowered to move together by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit animates the parts of, of the whole body of Christ, even as he animates her individual parts. And so often, I think we, we think in our individualistic American culture, we just think about being indwelled by the Holy Spirit as individual believers. And we are. But there is so much more weight that the New Testament puts on how we operate together in the Spirit. Spiritual gifts the one another's, being filled with the Spirit for the building up of the body. It's for the body. It's for the church. Christ called this whole group of disciples together and then gave them the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit empowers Christ's body who is together, his witness. So the New Testament assumes, and I would dare even say demands, that we live out our faith in community with other believers. You can't actually make sense of the New Testament any other way. It's a bunch of letters written to whole churches. And and there's so much in there about our relationship with one another. And so that's why we're going to focus at the beginning of 2023 on our relationship with one another through a sermon series called One Another. (laughs) Not so that we would become an inward-focused church. Not so that we could leave all that stuff that we were talking about in the book of Mark. Now is the time to tell others the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Not so that we can leave all of that, but so that this would be maximally healthy so that we have a platform from which to launch out into the world. That we would be a healthy body of Christ that is functioning properly. And therefore, we would be able to call others to Jesus and invite them into Christ's family. That's also why we're going to be working through the Transform Mutual Care study in in the gospel communities in the first part of the year. That's going to last a few months. It's going to be more of an in-depth dive into our our responsibilities to one another and, and to the family of God. And again, we want to make sure that our gospel communities are healthy places in which we are growing in our relationship with Christ so that we're supported in telling others about Jesus. Our mission must rely on the power of the Holy Spirit as he works through the various parts of his body. Finally, our mission must requires that we proclaim the forgiveness of sin through repentance and faith in Jesus. It requires that we proclaim the forgiveness of sin through repentance and faith in Jesus. In John chapter 20, verse 23, Jesus continues and says, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you withhold the forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now that's a pretty hard sentence, right? What, what in the world are we to make of that? Like, we have the power to decide if God forgives people? Not exactly. Merrill Tenney writes that a literal translation could be, those whose sins you forgive have already been forgiven, and those whose sins you do not forgive have not been forgiven. In other words, here's what he's saying. Authority has been given to the church as a whole 
Again, he's speaking to a whole group of believers. So we'd have really have this messed up if it was just any one of us individually, right? But he's, authority has been given to the church as a whole to rightly proclaim the standard by which salvation must occur. Repentance and faith. And then to recognize if it has occurred. That's baptism and then inclusion into the church through membership and church discipline. This is the same thing that Peter said in Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then what happened after that? They were baptized and added to the number of the church. The mission is about calling people to a right relationship with God through the forgiveness of sin by repentance and faith. It's nothing more, and it's nothing less. We are called to reveal the standard of God's holiness. We are called to highlight the depravity of all of our sinfulness. We're we're called to then proclaim the good news of Christ's sufficient work of grace in his death and resurrection. And then we're called to call all people to turn to him in repentance and faith. That's the mission. And as they turn to him, then we baptize them. We recognize the work of God in their lives, and we add them to the number of the church. And so we talked about this all throughout 2022. Now is the time. Now is the time to tell others the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And that truth does not change just because we're done studying Mark or just because we turned the calendar to 2023. Now is still the time to tell others the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And there are still plenty of people who do not truly know Jesus as the only Savior and Lord. And we must tell them. We must tell them. Jesus came into the world to send us out into the world as his witness. So we're going to pray right now. I'm going to pray for us. And then there are, there are some cards on the tables. Uh, they're called God-sized prayer cards. God si- the, the ones that say God-sized prayer cards, there are some others there that, that talk about uh, whole church initiatives. Leave those for a second. We'll pick up the God-sized prayer cards. And I'm going to ask you to write some things on those cards about how God might want to use you prayers that, that in, in which God might want to use you in this next year. So let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the ways that you are using and have used this church and the various parts of it. We praise you because you are a God who has not chosen to just work independently of your people. But rather, you work in and through your people. You you have come to save us and to give us a mission. And so, Lord, I, I pray that you would First of all, help us to realize the peace that you have given us in Christ this year and the immense gift that that is. And then, Father, I pray that you would work powerfully in our hearts to respond to your commission. That as we have been sent into the world, so you, as, as you have been sent, as you, as you have sent Jesus into the world, so you would send us. In a spirit of prayer, I want you to write down on those God-sized prayer cards how you believe that the Lord might lead you on mission this year. He's sending you out if you're a believer in Him. He's sending you into your family. Who in your family 
needs to hear the good news of Jesus Christ and be discipled in the faith. He's sending you into our church. What ministries has he put in your place, in, in your way? What, is, what ministries is he calling you to? What, what people is he calling you to disciple? He's sending you into our community. What is your sphere of influence and how can you be praying for them in our community? Maybe you need to go into a new part of our community. Maybe he would open new doors for you. Maybe you need to pray about that. And then maybe there are ways that he wants to send you even further than that into our world. And so ask the Lord. Ask him to put on your heart, Lord, where are you calling me to make disciples? And then write down your thoughts on that God-sized prayer card and keep that God-sized prayer card in your, in your Bible. Spend a couple moments doing that. And then we're going to come back and we're going to sing. And then we have a, a, a little bit more prayer to do as well.
You're the God who made the mountains roll. You brought down the walls of Jericho. You're the God who gives the miracles. We believe. Would you stand with us and sing? the God who parts the ocean wide. You're the God who parts the ocean wide. Just to bring us closer. Just to bring us closer to your side. You're the God who brings the dead to life. You're the God who brings the dead to life. We believe. God, how great. God, how great you are. Great things you have done for everything we've seen. There is more to come. Every victory, every battle won for everything we there is more to come. We're confident in all your ways. We are confident in all your ways. You never make mistakes. Because we know you never make mistakes. You fill us with a greater faith. God, you fill us with a greater faith. We believe, oh, we believe. God, how great you are. God, how great you are. Great things, great things you have done for everything we've seen. There is more to come. Every Every victory, every battle won, for everything we see, there is more to come. All of our hope, all of our hope in our trust, all of our trust in our future. All of our future in the God who never fails. All of our faith in all our strength. All of our strength in future. All of our future in the God who never fails. Hope, all of our hope in trust. All of our trust in our future. All of our future is the God who never, our faith, all of our faith in our strength, all of our strength in our future, all of our future is the God who never fails. God, how great. trust you for the future. We want to do that now as a people, as we pray to you, as we call out to you.
but you'll find around your tables uh, the other cards that say uh, something like 2023 Churchwide Initiatives. And uh, there are four different cards there for you to spread around to different people in your table. And you can have a seat again, and uh, we'll make you stand one more time after that. Uh, but we just want to call our church to prayer on these items. Uh, there, are, there are four uh, primary areas. I can't order. I can't order. Okay, nobody else is. Uh, so there are, I believe, elders. There are uh, the men's and women's initiatives, uh, our building, and then a bunch of outreach things that we have going on as a church. And actually, before we do that, Heidi Parker is going to come and share about one of those outreach things, give testimony to that. Uh, thank you, Heidi, for standing and reminding me. Um, and Solomon's going to give testimony, too. Um, so we uh, got to participate in Hope Explored with Salenko Neighborhood Ministries. David and I and um, Laura Cheek was with us, as well as um, the Kings. And uh, two things stuck out to me that I was thankful for in being able to participate in that. One was uh, the opportunity to really respond to the Mark message of uh, sharing and sharing the gospel and obeying Christ's call in the Great Commission. Um, I think sometimes I get, in my background and also in my current uh, situation in life, I live within kind of a believer bubble um, where I don't know many non-believers. And so being able to be a part of Hope Explored was like, I couldn't avoid not being with non-believers. That was the point. Like, we were intentionally having a Bible study with non-believers. And so there was great joy in that and joy in the obedience um, to answer Christ's commission. Um, but it was also challenging. And Pastor Ben talked about the pain line. And there was an element of the pain line involved because we're, <laughs> David and I were walking. We live, like, right across the street. So we're walking there the first night. And I was like, why do we have a Bible study with people who aren't believers? Like, what does that even look like? And so there was a uh, stepping outside of our comfort zone. And so being able to see God grow me in that, and from the, it was three weeks, did we get three weeks? Um, like over the weeks of like the nerves of the first week, and then just the excitement of being able to see the same group of people. And um, we were, it was a different group than we expected. I expected, I don't, I don't really know what I expected. Um, but the whole thing was just different than what I expected. But that's so good because that was where God was able to cause us to rely on him more. Because if, I, if it had been what I expected, then I would have been prepared. And I did not feel prepared when we actually got to it. So that just rely, caused me to rely on God um, all the more. So that was great. But then also I was thankful for the body of Christ um, because I would not have been able to do that by myself. And I was reminded of the importance of working together as the body. I was thankful for David because he led the Bible study part and he led in the questions and guided things. I would not have wanted that job. Um, I was grateful for Carrie because she made all the food and organized all that and we didn't even have to think about it, but she provided the hospitality that fostered the community. Um, I was thankful for Laura who, um, if you know Laura, she's not a hugger. I saw her hug someone at Hope Explored. And like, so even to watch watch I know David wasn't comfortable in leading that we talked about it it was a challenge for him it was a challenge for Laura to love and express her love and a hug in that moment but that was what was needed and so to watch all of us fit into um, the unique role that God had for us was really beautiful to watch so if you get a chance to be a part of Hope Explored do it because um, it will challenge you and will cause you to see the beauty of the gospel in a different way all right, so that uh, gives you just a little window into the, one of the things on your outreach card that you can be praying about. Uh, first of all, we had four people go through the first round of Hope Explored, which was great because we had like a week and a half notice on that, and to get four people in that was amazing. Uh, that was the Lord's doing. And, uh, and so we have another one coming up uh, that, that Cheryl Baldwin and Melissa Moeller are running. We, they could use some more help if you wanted to jump on board with that. Uh, it's at Slanka Neighborhood Ministries, and um, and. and we need to be praying because I don't, I don't know if there's anybody signed up, but we would love to see people sign up for that, right? Um, and uh, so th that's a three week, uh, three weeks in a row. Uh, they're going to meet this time on Wednesday nights. And then, um, and then after that, we're hoping to run more Hope Explored courses there on kind of a regular rotation. And then as people go through Hope Explored and we make connections with them, which are still being maintained, by the way, the Parkers are maintaining connections, Laura's maintaining connections, um, 
as, as, as those connections are made, we're going to take them through another course, Christianity Explored, which takes them on an even deeper dive through the Gospel of Mark. And, and so that's another thing that you could get I- involved in as well. Uh, and so um, be praying, be praying that the Lord is still at work in the seeds that were planted there. And then that's just one glimpse of a bazillion other things that the Lord is doing in and through our church. So let's get praying. Let's pray for about five minutes. We're going to come back. We're going to have offerings, sing, and then announcements, quick announcements, and be done, okay? So go ahead and pray. Let's pray together. Right? Cards, assign people to pray, and then pray.
Our Father and our God, we are grateful to you. We look back over this year, and we look at the year ahead. We look at all these things that we have to pray for as a church body, all the ways in which you are actively at work. And I just, I want to start with gratitude. We are so grateful to you. There's nothing that we have that did not come from you. There's no part of where we are now that is not your doing. We give you all the praise. We give you all of the thanks for what has happened. And we know that whatever happens in the future that's of any value, we'll give you the thanks for that. Not ourselves. Not each other. Not our cleverness or wisdom or skills. We give it all to you. All the thanks, all the gratitude. And so God, now, as we prepare to give, as the ushers come forward and we prepare to to, to gather our regular giving, I pray that you unite us in heart and in mind, in gratitude to you. That we would be a people who appropriately respond to the greatness of the gift that we've been given by the lavishness with which we give, both to the church, to our families, to our communities, to everyone around us, because that's how you gave. You gave it all. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. As the, as the ushers come forward, we're reminded that giving is an act of worship. Hebrews 13, 16 says, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. We, don't, we no longer sacrifice bulls and goats for our sins, but we still do offer up a sacrificial offering of praise, of worship, and our, our financial giving is just one of the ways that we do that. So as the offering passes you by, would you stand and sing this last song with us? It's a song we sing often. Feel free to sing all the words. We sometimes do a call and response. Sing it all today. Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows? Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? We do. Forgot there's no words. Do the responses. You got this. Love you all. Is all creation groaning? Come on. It is. Is a new creation coming? It is. Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? It is. And is it good that we remind ourselves of this? It is. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, the Lion of Jude, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. So is he worthy? all blessing and honor and glory is he worthy of this he is does the father truly love us he does 
does the Spirit move among us? He does. And does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those He loves? He does. And does our God intend to dwell again with us? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. From every people and tribe, from every nation and tongue, he has made us a kingdom and priests to God to reign with the Son. So is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy? seat. We're going to do speedy announcements. Uh, first off, if you're visiting with us th uh, this morning, uh, we'd like to announce that this isn't the normal way that we worship, but hopefully it give you a taste of what the family of family looks like here at Oak Hill, and we would welcome you back. We are looking to do a Consider Oak Hill on January 15th at 5 p.m. If you're interested in learning more about what it is to be a member of the body of Christ here at Oak Hill, see me afterwards and we'll get you signed up to attend January 15th in the evening at 5 o'clock. Uh, looking ahead, a couple things going on. You should have received, although you may not have picked up, um, the one another study books that we're going to be using in gospel communities. There's one per family should be in your mailbox. If you didn't get one, see David afterwards. He'll get you hooked up. Uh, the other thing you should notice is that um, tithing envelopes that you might have wanted for this morning are in your mailboxes uh, for this coming year. So grab those. If you have any questions about that, you can see James Nixon after. Thank you, James, for your work yesterday and getting those turned out for everybody. Uh, the one another sermon series is starting uh, next Sunday. Uh, we're going to uh, have a Bible, daily Bible reading plan that will also go along with that, in addition to the extra study passages that you'll find in the Transform Mutual Care books that you'll be reading for gospel community work that you'll be doing. Uh, men's and women's intensives are coming up in January as well. Uh, if you have not been invited to attend that, see Monica for the ladies and Pastor Ben for the men. Uh, these two leadership development intensives are designed to help all of us as maturing believers in Jesus Christ to cultivate a biblical understanding of God's design for men and for women in our various roles that we have. Uh, anybody in high school and above, you're welcome to attend. It's going to be Tuesday evenings for the men and Saturday morning for the ladies. Yeah, if you haven't said yes or no yet, please let us know one way or the other, uh, Pastor Ben or Monica, so that we can get you materials. Um, one quick update, just so you know, we've got um, some folks working diligently. The uh, building inspection for St. Balls was done uh, last week and partly the week before. 
Uh, Phil and his team will be looking at uh, the reports so that we have a good understanding of what we're getting ourselves into, if you will, from a building property standpoint. Uh, Phil's meeting with his team on Thursday evening. Uh, the finance team, uh, under James' guidance, is going to get together, I believe, the morning of the 14th, Saturday, to review uh, current cash flow budget that we have and how the new operating expenses that could be incurred with uh, St. Paul's sort of meshes together and what does that do to our budget and, and how does that look. So just know that there is work being done um, by both of those teams uh, as feverishly as possible so that we can have more information and more things to present to you during our family chat that will be coming up on the 15th of January. And with that, I just want to share one verse with you this morning that hopefully helps connect the dots. This is um, from Romans 15, and Paul writing at the end of the chapter, or in the middle of the chapter 15, he says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Folks, we live in a world that each of us sitting here need to hear about the hope that is in Jesus Christ. And trust me when I tell you, there's people out there in the world that you encounter that have hope in either the wrong thing or they have no hope at all. And they need to hear about the good news of Jesus Christ. So my charge with you this morning is to share the good news of Jesus Christ with those that you encounter. And sometimes it may be your spouse or your children or yourself. Know that you are loved by your Lord and Savior. Have a great day and an awesome year.